and welcome to episode number 60 of the Introvert Biz Growth Podcast, a show where I talk to introverts who grow their business and make a difference. I'm Sarah Zinacroce, as always, and thrilled that you're spending another half hour with me today for another great episode. I hope you're having a great summer. In Europe, we're in the middle of a huge heat wave. I came back from Sicily and it ended up being warmer here in Switzerland than over there. And I find it quite hard to get back to work after spending three weeks near the beach and spending most of the time with my kids either in the water or on the beach. So in fact, I just shared with my subscribers this week that on these rare occasions, it usually happens in the summer, I just wish I could go back to a nine to five job where my boss tells me what to do. It's true, I'm just kind of sluggish with this heat and lacking the usual motivation. And besides the heat, my usual routines are also kind of disrupted because the kids are still home from school and we're kind of sleeping in a bit later than usual and I'm not meditating as much as I want and all of that. But all is not lost because I've just committed to start working with Lisa Peterson, whom you've met in episode number 53. And I hired her as my business coach and with her help, I'll be putting together a program for, drum roll, introverted entrepreneurs. Yeah, it's time. I know this is episode 60, so it took me 60 episodes to come up with this idea and realizing what's missing and what I can offer to help fellow introverts. So I'm really looking forward to building this with you guys, because obviously I'm going to ask you for feedback along the way. So this is going to be a couple of months in progress. So I'm not just going to go out there and say, hey, here's this thing. But at the same time, I want to build it with you. So there's probably going to be like a test run or some kind of, you know, affordable way to participate in the first kind of edition. And we build it together with your feedback. So that's what's coming. But on to today's podcast. Today, I'm talking to Heather Ann Havenwood. Heather is one of these entrepreneurs you would never expect to be introverted. But deep down, she really treasures her alone time. So Heather Ann teaches coaches, experts, and service providers current online marketing and sales strategies to close the right clients anytime they want. She's regarded as a top authority on digital marketing, sales coaching, and online publishing business strategies. Heather Ann has been named top 50 most follow women entrepreneurs for by Huffington Post. She's also been named Chief Sexy Boss from her Amazon bestseller book, Sexy Boss, How Female Entrepreneurship is Changing the Rule Book and Beating the Big Boys, and others called her the wizard behind the curtain. Starting out without a list, a product, a name, or an offer, Heather Ann has the ability to create business packages, marketing lists, and sales from ground zero. She has instructed and coached hundreds of entrepreneurs, leading them down the path to success in building a lucrative business from their knowledge and leveraging it online. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Heather Ann. Hi, Heather. So good to speak to you today. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Sarah. I'm so excited to talk to you. I read the official bio just in the intro to my audience. Ah. So I want to hear from you kind of the story with the introverted header and, and how that, you know, kind of relates to the business that you're running today. Okay. Oh, you want me to do the bio. How you said it was <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like okay, <laughs> okay you, you're not reading my bio again. No, I was like, I'm I so wanna, sorry. I want to like, hear it from you. Share. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So there you go. Me going into my head. That's an introverted <laughs> moment. We just exactly, had that. So there yeah. you go. And me just waiting. <laughs> and you just so cutely waiting. So, all right. Yeah. Basically, you know, believe it or not, I wouldn't consider myself an extrovert now. So people would think I am. However, I do tasks that are extroverted, but my daily life is very introverted. And I think that's very common, believe it or not, for entrepreneurs and creators. But it didn't start out that way. So when I was a kid and growing up, I actually didn't speak. It's kind of interesting. So everyone thought I was a good baby. <laughs> oh, she's so good. You know, actually what was happening is I was introverted and I wasn't speaking. So Around age six or seven, it went from, she's a good kid to, oh, she's not talking. Now she's mm -hmm. kind and all that. Mm -hmm. So from age seven to 14, I was in speech therapy every week. 
for seven years straight, sometimes twice a week because I didn't speak well. And that's why people always ask me where I'm from because I don't have an accent. I'm actually born and raised in Texas. And everyone around me, including my mama's sister and my neighbors, if you speak to them, they're extremely Southern. You know, how you doing? And like all that. Right. But I have what I call a neutral voice. I can mm-hmm. go both ways. And so I used to travel the country and where I would go to New York and I would throw a New York accident and then I'd throw a Southern accident. I'm what I call neutral. That's because of seven years of Diane, my speech therapist, like killed that part of me, right? So it's very much, she just taught me how so to speak. Interesting. Yeah. So was Diane not from Texas then? Diane McCann, isn't that crazy? I remember her name. I don't know. I don't know. I think she was just doing her job as a speech therapist and just having me focus on how to speak. Now, I had no idea that in my life, I'm now in the speaking business. I have books and I have podcasts and I speak and all this. I'm pretty sure that's not why she was doing it. My mom, my sister and her were just trying to get me through school, right? (laughs) Just like, let's pass her. But at the same time, I wasn't a very good student. They wanted to put me in special ed. So I was ADD considered and all that and all the stuff that entrepreneur nowadays, like, yeah, I'm that. But back then, when you're a blonde haired seven year old little girl, something's wrong with you, right? So that's kind of what I was brought up and something's wrong with you. So all through school, I was the introverted little girl. My extroverted days started with a girl named Courtney, <laughs> girlfriend named Courtney in junior high. She was obnoxious. One of those girls, you know, just obnoxious. And we became best friends. And I just like lived vicariously through her. So we'd hang out and she was just like this noxious, loud mouth. <laughs> and I was like, this is cool to be around this. You know, so she kind of pulled that out of me. And it wasn't really until I was thrown into this business in 2001 to be an entrepreneur did I actually start to get my voice. It took me a while to really start to get my own voice. I actually took a test, the Myers-Briggs, that one. Mm-hmm. And I took it in probably the early 90s, right in college, out of college, and I was an I. And then I took it, I don't know, early 2000s and I'm an E. You know, so I think it flip-flops a lot sometimes. Interesting. Yeah, I agree. I've spoken to people who were extroverts before and now in their you know later years, they become more introverted. So I definitely think it changes, but sometimes we also put on this extroverted mask as the business owner and where what it really comes down to in terms of being introverted or extroverted is the energy. Where do we get our energy, right? Yeah, so, that's what I was going to go to. You said, Where? yeah, I speak, but you know, I have very introverted days. Like you said in your home office and you know, you yeah. work by yourself. And, yeah, and an extrovert, I think, would struggle with that. Yeah, it's interesting because a friend of mine who's a big time speaker, I mean, I've known him for probably over a decade. I know a lot of speakers, but this particular one, I mean, he travels the world. He's been doing this for almost 25 years and huge stages, right? And he's probably the most introverted person I've ever met. When he's at home and his home in Florida, he talks about he shuts the world off for like Mm -hmm. two, three days or whatever before he goes on his next thing. He's actually introvert and he knows he gets his energy from that closed off time. That's where he gets his energy. And then he goes out in the world, he presents, he does his thing, and then he comes back. He's right. always coming back to his home. He's very, very particular in his home, meaning no one's really allowed in except one or two people. You know, it's a very introverted thing. And I find that as I grew up in the speaking business, that's very common for not only speakers, but artists. That's why you see big artists. Like, you know, remember Michael Jackson, he was extreme introvert. No one understood yeah. that. Is because when they're on stage, it's the creation of it. When they're on stage, their performance, there's a performance conversation. It's nothing to do with extrovert. It's a performance. And then they go inward to get their energy. So Britney Spears is the same way. There's a ton of musicians that have that same similarity. It has nothing to do with the extrovert personality. It's the performance and then in, and then performance and then in. It's over time. So once I realized that about it's a performance, peak performance in the world of like Tony Robbins, peak performance, once you understand that, for me, I fuel it. I know when to go out in, out in. And then it's not weird. It's not bipolar. It's actually how I feed, you know? And then I structure my life in such a way that I'm getting fed. Yeah. So after a big speaking event, do you like yeah. schedule in alone time because you just know I have to kind of decompress after or you're fine the next day? And 
in the speaking specifically, let's say I speak at two o'clock on an event, right? Mm -hmm. I will be extremely introvert until I go to the event. So I speak at two o'clock on that event. I really like to what I call be inside the environment before I just show up, right? I'm not one of those like, I haven't been to the event all day. I just show up at 150. No, no, no. So I'll be introvert, introvert, introvert a lot until that morning. And then I will go. And when I go to the event, let's say it's a big conference or whatever, I show up and I'm boom, I'm on. I turn my performance on all the way through the presentation and all the way to the end of the event. It's a performance. When I leave the event, I go off, right? My introvert time actually goes the day before. Mm -hmm. That's my hardcore introvert time. You know, that morning, I'm pretty much off until I finally turn on. It's a little like a turn on switch. I find that after a big event, there's momentum that happens with people. So you kind of kind of keep it on. You can't really go inward again in quite fast. You have to keep it on for a period of like 24, 48 hours. Right. Yeah. All right. So we talked a lot about speaking. So yeah. is that your main focus for your business now or no, tell us no. about other uh, generating uh, revenue streams? I do one-on-one consulting and coaching. I build businesses online, I build my own businesses online. So the one of the things I also do is I just got into this because people have been asking me, I'm actually building a media network and building out a podcast media network. And so I'm launching people's podcasts as well as bringing them into my network and so that we're doing cross promotion. So I'm building that out right now. And we've already produced over seven podcasts this year alone. And we look to doubling that in the next quarter. So my focus is really teaching people and brands how and why podcasting is truly a future of traffic and media traffic. It's huge. People don't understand it. And so I've kind of uh, learned the hard way, of course, and we all are, how to what I call crack the code of podcasting. How do you actually get traffic to it? How do you actually get listeners to it? So I've really kind of cracked that code. And now I want to help other entrepreneurs, but also big brands. Because the next conversation with podcasting is a brand conversation, meaning big brands. Like there's one that just came out in Wall Street Journal about it's a daily podcast. It's three minutes long, exactly. And it's designed for parents to play for their kids to brush their teeth. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, okay, honey, brush your teeth. I don't want to brush your teeth. Okay, well, let's go. And they press it and it's real like cute music. And it's all about you should brush your teeth. It's all fun. It hasn't yet. I'm sure after the Wall Street Journal article it will, but that's an easy add on for a Colgate or a huge brand, you know, sponsored by Colgate, sponsored by whatever, aim, toothpaste. So that's the next level of podcasting. That's so interesting because right now it's the other way around. You get sponsors on to your podcast. And then I don't know how you feel about that, but me as an introvert, I just find that so cheesy sometimes, you know? So, so. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. Okay. Sponsored by whatever. Yeah, I've had ClickBank. I'm sorry, Click. I'm going blank on it. Been a sponsor, Thinkific, been a sponsor. Yeah, to me, it's just the game of the game. Right. So it's not cheesy. It's here's what it's like, Sarah. Turn on your TV and then say, I'm sorry, I want at least a half an hour without any commercials. They're not going to do that. That's how the business is played, right? right? So it's not like they're going to go, you know what? We've decided because we really like you, Sarah, we're going to do a full half hour of news without any commercials. <laughs> it's not going to happen because that's how they pay the bills, right? Right. But what I feel cheesy about and almost yucky about is that I have to read those commercials myself. I'd rather have them, you know, send me a spot and I can add that to my podcast. But I have to like pretend that I'm actually using this toothpaste or these undies or whatever it is. And that just goes against me. I don't know why. Oh, okay. <laughs> send them to me. I'll do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That'll be fun. All right, let's switch gears and talk about your biggest strength as an introverted entrepreneur. What do you think makes you know you stronger because you have that strength? As I think it's understanding it. So I was kind of talking about earlier about how I go in and out, in and out. Because I've been in the speaking business for a long time. There's a period in my life, 2001, 2017, I traveled the country doing seminars and I produced over 450 events, you know, event after event after event. And I would get exhausted. I thought something it was like, it's not the best world for me and all that kinds of stuff. I didn't understand how I worked. I didn't understand that it's a performance thing. And then I go inward and outward. As soon as I understood it and how I feed, basically, they call it 
I set my life up, up in a way that it feeds that. So I know myself that I can turn on for an event for two or three or four days. I can do that. No problem. But I also know that I need time ahead of time to really go introvert. And I also need time afterwards to really like decompress. Mm -hmm. And that's actually just the ebb and flow as long as I understand that and I can work inside of that, that's fine. Where I was having a hard time was when I didn't understand that and I was burning out. I was trying to be someone I wasn't, you mm-hmm. know, because I was mm-hmm. surrounded by what I call really outgoing people. Yeah. What about a challenge, something that you're still struggling with because you think that somehow goes back to your introversion? I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm not really because I understand it. It's just mm-hmm. like when I was diagnosed ADD a long time ago when I was a kid, they put a label on you and then you hear all the stuff. What shifted all that for me was when I started learning what the heck ADD is and doing research. I did research papers on it when I was allowed for in school, like you can do anything you want kind of thing, papers. I would do it on ADD. And when I learned that it was a huge strength that ADD really is almost like an introvert, extrovert thing. When you understand that it's a strength, I no longer see as a challenge. So challenge, it's just like I just work inside the construct, right? So it's like an NFL player. The NFL player doesn't look at the rules as a negative. The NFL player looks as, okay, these are the rules. How do I play with inside that? How do I win inside of the rules? Right. What if we go back to that little girl who was so introverted? How did she become the Heather Ann that you are today, there must have been some challenges to overcome then. I guess I didn't know that there was a problem. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? I was younger. So I don't know. I I don't have that view that it was something to overcome. It was something that I dealt with. I think the biggest thing I had to overcome was the stigma because I was diagnosed with ADD when I was 1975. So it was pre the big explosion in the late 80s. And I was constantly given Ritalin which makes you all jacked up. And so I was rebellious. I wouldn't take it. <laughs> mm. You know, I was like, oh yeah, I'll take it. And then I'd throw it away or act like it's in my mouth and spit it out or something. But yeah, kind really- of the stigma that, you know, something was wrong with you. And I guess you must have done some work on yourself to understand, no, nothing is wrong with me. I'm just more introverted. And so I can use this as a strength, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I didn't really see it that way. I didn't think it was something to overcome. I think it's a belief system. So Mm -hmm. people said whatever they said. And then I'm like, okay, that's not true. And so you shift the stigma. Mm -hmm. You just shift it. And I don't take them on straight. There's nothing to really overcome. If someone says something's wrong with you, Heather, I'm like, well, that's your view. Good luck with that. You know, as long as I know what my particular view is on myself, then it's okay. There's a difference. I stopped buying into what other people said about me. There's nothing to overcome. It's not an overcoming thing. I don't buy into what you say anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's a difference there. Did I have people say that? Yeah. I was definitely a person that no one expected much of me (laughs) other than to produce babies and to have children and to love my husband. I'm not married. I don't have any kids. So, you know, and I always look good, but one out of three ain't bad, right? So, (laughs) I think the expectation of me from my family was pretty much low. So I'm the one that put the expectation of going higher in front of me. Mm, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting because the next question is the aha moment. So maybe that was your aha moment or do you want to share another one? You know, one of the things I think was interesting growing up was... I didn't know that I was introvert. I didn't know that I had a speech problem. I just know my mom was always sending me to speech therapy. I definitely thought something was wrong with me because I couldn't play with my friends. Like that was annoying. You know, I was going to therapy over and over and over again. I started to become more comfortable in speaking around adults and around people, but I was never the person in front of the room or the one cracking the jokes, right? I was not the funny one. I'm the serious one, right? So I think the aha moment for me was that girl Courtney that gave me this freedom around her to say whatever I wanted to say and see what the reaction was for people. She kind of, in a weird way, gave me a voice. And what's sad about Courtney, I think, (laughs) she started hanging out with the wrong kids, you know what I mean, high school. And so we stopped hanging out. She's in prison (laughs) now. (laughs) It sucks because she was such a good person. At the same time, you talk about two people that knew each other in junior high and high school. And I took the path of 
focusing on school and being around good kids. And she started hanging around drug dealers and stuff like that. And got it with the guy. And next thing you know, she's in prison like 10 years later. Mm. You know, I think that it's just an interesting thing how quickly our paths can change, right? Mm. Yeah. And I think that it's really an aha moment of knowing that we all can be neighbors, but that doesn't mean we're all going to end up at the same place. Yeah, it's true. I it's feel really bad for her. <laughs> I do. I do. You know, she chose her path and it sucks because she was a good person. All right. Let's talk about lighter things. Why don't yeah. you share your personal habit, something that you do on a regular basis that you think contributes to your success? And I wake up, I do an exercise, a like cardio, usually minimum 30, max 45 minutes, cardio, light, heavy, whatever. I'm always doing something outside. I get out of the house as fast as I possibly can. I've had a dog for 16 years, so but she just passed away. That's been really hard. You know, the habit of walking a dog for 16 years, three times a day, no matter what. But the cardio is a key one. Also doing a gratitude journal is a key one. Right now I'm trying to do it twice a day, but at least once a day. So the cardio in the morning is just the first thing. And then I usually exercise again later in the day, either yoga or weights. I exercise every day. Nice. Yeah. Our body is our most important asset, right? So I've got to take it care is. of it. Yeah. Yes. What about an internet resource, something online that you can share with our listeners? So Slack, I mean, I know that's kind of a boring one, but Slack is a big one I use constantly. Evernote constantly for all of my podcasts. People always ask me, how do I keep everything together? Airtable, I also keep that for all oh. my spreadsheets. It's a big one. Never, never heard of that. So Airtable, think of it like a, a highly intelligent Excel spreadsheet, but you can set structures up such a way you can add images and links and cool stuff and you can share it with a team. It's super awesome. Yeah. So that's how we do all of our schedules of our show. That's the calendar. It's like the editorial calendar. And we can put everything, even the MP3, everything inside the spreadsheet. So everything's in one place. Hmm, cool. I'll definitely look that up. You've heard Slack and Evernote before, but Air- yeah, Airtable is a good one. Yeah. yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Awesome. What about a book that you would recommend to the introverted audience and why? Well, mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw in mine just because that's fun. I did already. And I'll give you another one. Sexy Boss. My book is called Sexy Boss. One of my books. Sexy Boss, The Power of Women is Changing the Rule Book for Money, Success, and Sex. It's about empowerment and being the big boys. It's my personal journey, so I highly suggest you read it. I have some great nuggets in there. But honestly, let's see. I'm looking at my bookshelf. There's a lot of them. I would say the one that I'm reading, but people would freak out if I read that one. <laughs> they would probably be like, what? <laughs> so I'll give one that's not so controversial. The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. Okay. Never heard of that either. So, Oh my gosh. Yes. Florence Scovel Shin was a woman in like the 20s and 30s in America. And she was kind of like the Deepak Chopra of that time. Uh-huh. But of course she was a woman in New York, so she didn't get any kind of recognition phrase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was like a metaphysical success, Tony Robbins kind of thing. And so all her books are about her stories and all the work she did with people. Wonderful. All right. I'll make sure to link to those two books, of course. Yeah. We're coming to the end of the conversation. You already mentioned your gratitude journal. So my last question to all my listeners is always, what are you grateful for today or this week? My biggest grateful for today is my health, you know, my health and my energy and money is important. Success is important. I think success is my duty and making money, creating money is my duty. At the same time, my energy and my health is extremely important to actually have that happen. And so don't take your health for granted at all. Yeah. Wise words for the end of the show. Thanks so much, Heather. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you. There you go. That's it for today's episode of the Introvert Best Growth Podcast. You can find out more about Heather Ann at heatherhavenwood.com or on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash heatherhavenwood. You'll find this episode's show notes at saracenacroce.com forward slash episode 60. And if you are listening to the show on a mobile device, as you know, you can click on the description and you'll actually find all the clickable links in there. 
This is Sarah Sinekochi signing off from the Introvert Biz Growth Podcast. Remember, you need to use your unique introverted superpowers in order to make a difference. Stay cool and enjoy the rest of your summer.